It's the year 1999 and the coolest things in the world are video games. One of the greatest rivalries in gaming history is alive and well. One is a blue hedgehog with speed, attitude, and overwhelming coolness. The other is a plumber. In September, Sonic Adventure hits store shelves and blows everyone's freaking mind. Your friend Zack is the only person you know that has a Dreamcast, so you go over there as often as possible to play that instant classic. And while you're there, you're gonna carve out some time to watch the coolest video game movie in town. And no, it doesn't involve plumbers. We're about to take a look at one of the most memorable movies of my childhood, so grab some snacks, turn down your lights, and get comfy, cause it's time for Sonic the Hedgehog the Movie. In a dark laboratory in an unknown location, Dr. Robonic is putting the finishing touches on his latest creation, Metal Sonic. He's missing one key piece of the puzzle, though, and that's Sonic the Hedgehog's essential life data. Whatever that is. Finally, the only thing left to be done is to capture the essential life data from your counterpart. Then you'll be complete when you awaken. Kill him! <laughs> Oh, hell yeah, that intro, this is going to be epic. Eh. Sonic, I finally finished it. See, isn't it great? It's a jet-propelled bodyboard. Come on, you want to try it out? Not right now, thanks. All right, I'll go use it myself. Sonic and Tails are two cool dudes hanging out on a cool floating island in the sky. Tails is bodyboarding, Sonic is jamming to some tunes, and somewhere in the distance, an insane old man is approaching them at high speeds. And, as you've probably already noticed, don't expect to hear any familiar Sonic voice actors in here. Tails is just like a little kid with his new toy. The stand-in voices do a pretty good job for the most part, except for Tails, who is just... Yeah, pretty much. Hi, Sonic! I have some news for you! Oh, not that old man again. Count me out! This old guy blows. Sonic doesn't even want to help him out even though his ship is on fire, so it's Tails to the rescue, and this never made any sense to me. Tails' solution to the ship's engine being on fire is to try and reach out and grab the flaming hot engine. Aside from melting his fingers off, I'm not sure what that was supposed to accomplish. Then he lands on the wing of the ship, brags about his bodyboarding skills, so I had some good practice before on my bodyboard! And then they both smash into a wall and die. Except not, because Sonic is here, and he's running around all fast, and... Well, that's all he can really do, but he sure looks cool doing it. Oh, Sonic, thank you! This old man came all the way over here just to tell Sonic that the president wants to speak with him. You know, it might have been easier if you just called to tell us that. Uh, I could have done that too. <laughs> I'll get into that a bit more in a second, but first just appreciate this awesome sequence where the tornado's runway comes out. Look at this. It's like the scene in Sonic Adventure, only cool and good. And to top it all off, Tails is wearing a pilot hat. Why isn't he always wearing a pilot hat? I freaking love it. All right, now seems like a good time to talk about the story. This movie features not only some characters we've never seen before, but a new location as well. Sonic and Tails live on Planet Freedom in the Land of the Sky, which is made up of a bunch of sky-high floating islands. They make their way to the president of the Land of the Sky, only to find out that he and his daughter Sarah are being held hostage by none other than Robotnik. That's a dirty trick, Robotnik. <laughs> no fair! You kidnapped the president and Sarah so you can hold them for ransom and take over South Island, didn't you? 
If you're saying to yourself, well, I've never heard of the president of the land of the sky before, well, that's because he sucks. In fact, he and his daughter Sarah both suck big ol' fat ones, and they both play minor roles in this story. Stupid, annoying minor roles. And don't even get me started on the theories as to why his daughter has cat ears and a tail, that's just… we don't need to go there today. Uh, Sonic, please listen to whatever Robotnik has to say. Oh, alright. Give me the scoop, Robotnik. Thank you, Sonic, I will. Robotnik begins to explain why he's here. Planet Freedom is made up of two layers, the beautiful floating islands of the Land of the Sky and the surface layer known as the Land of Darkness, Pajama Sam joke. Robotnik hails from the Land of Darkness, where he lived peacefully in a city called Robotropolis. Until Metal Robotnik came out of nowhere and attacked my peaceful city with a battalion of demonic robots. Metal Robotnik then sabotaged the robot generator, which creates the high voltage electricity electricity for the entire city. Okay, Robotnik, this is the story you're going with? Someone else built a giant robot version of you, attacked your city, and sabotaged a generator? Okay, all right. According to my calculations, if the robot generator isn't stopped by sunrise tomorrow, there will be a giant explosion! Sonic obviously wants no part in this because he's too cool to care. But can he resist the charm of an anime cat girl? Sonic, I don't care what happens to Robotnik or Daddy, but please just do this for the two of us. An anime cat girl who apparently has no problem with saying I don't care what happens to my father when her dad is like right there, girl, come on. Oh. Someone tell me why I should trust Robotnik when 99 out of 100 times he's lying. But what if this is that one other time? Oh. So, armed with a GPS watch given to them by Robotnik, Sonic and Tails fly into a giant cloud butthole. Sonic grabs onto a metal wing, somehow, and Tails still looks baller in this pilot's hat, even as he's straight up beefing it. Like, dude, you've made how many planes by now and you're still crashing them? Come on. Meanwhile, Sarah and Robotnik are still back in the land of the sky, playing video games and not being annoying in the slightest. Fine! What? I quit! Oh. I wanna go for a drive! Absolutely not! No, no, I want to! Take me on a drive now! Hold up for a second, guys. I actually got this really good idea for a Sonic game, like for real. So you take Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Genesis, right? A classic. You take that beauty and you just... No, no! <laughs> Oh yeah, here we go. This is what the kids showed up for. There's speed, there's action, there's jumping on springs and looking cool, destroying robots. I mean, when this movie does have some action, it really reminds me why I liked it so much back in the day. <laughs> oh, that thing's Metal Robotnik! Uh oh, it's Metal Robotnik, and he's here to just poop on everybody. He's just gonna poop all over the place. What is this stuff? It's poop, dude! You got pooped on! Just as things are looking their bleakest, and it looks like the almighty poo of Metal Robotnik is too much for our heroes to handle, in comes Knuckles, and he is looking fly. Look at that hat. Knuckles! Hurry and save Sonic! Uh, oh! Knuckles is kicking people in the face, there's bodyboarding, Sonic is drowning to death, Knuckles steps in poop. This is the movie that Sonic fans were asking for. <laughs> there. Of course, Sonic and the crew take down Metal Robotnik, who was being piloted by the real Robotnik, which, uh, doesn't make sense? Isn't he just disrupting his own plan to steal Sonic's life data or whatever? Anyway, Robotnik steals Sonic's life data after the three make it down to Robotropolis and shut off the generator. And then, now brace yourself, the three have realized that they've awoken something. Something terrible. Okay, I'll, I'll stop doing that now. It's a robot that looks exactly like Sonic! 
I'm sorry, did you just call him a rowboat? A robot that looks exactly like Sonic! So then all this sparkly stuff falls down from the sky and turns into fire, which then... Uh, I don't know. But hey, Sarah and Robotnik are here now. You know what, it has been a little while, so let's give Sarah another chance to be not annoying. What are Sarah and Robotnik doing out here together? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, shut it down. Our dumb, so dumb heroes have realized a bit too late that they fell for a really stupid trap, and now they have to deal with a way bigger problem. I, Dr. Robotnik, scientist extraordinaire, have finally completed my greatest invention ever. Sonic wasn't being electrocuted earlier. Instead, I was transferring his life data and collecting all the information essential to my creation. Robotnik explains his very, very smart and well-thought-out plan. Instead of simply electrocuting and killing Sonic earlier, he took his still unexplained life data and put it into a metal robot so that that robot could kill Sonic. Genius. Then Sonic gets completely stomped on and kidnapped because he's really... I mean, for all the credit he gets, he's sometimes just not that great. So now, after enjoying seeing the gang fighting together, we get to see everybody in different places, which is... Always fun. Tails and Knuckles head back to the land of the sky. Robotnik mistakenly believes that he killed Sonic. <laughs> Sonic will never again be a pain in my egg! The president is like way far behind in the information department. Could this be the work of Metal Robotnik? And Metal Sonic visits the old man owl from the beginning of the movie. Wait, what are you doing? Stop! It doesn't look like anyone's even been in here. I'm behind you, Tails. You've come home early. Those are Sonic's favorite clothes, so don't blame me if he gets mad at you. Oh yes, who could forget Sonic's trademark favorite set of clothes? You've got cool pilot Tails, cool treasure hunting Knuckles, and Captain fucking Loser. Suddenly, Tails knows everything that's going on, even though none of it makes any sense. He's trying to reprogram the watch that Robotnik gave him in order to track Metal Sonic. Tails, without having any way to know any of this, explains that Metal has all of Sonic's memories, thoughts, fashion sense, you name it. And so that means that Metal and Sonic will be in the same place. I don't follow that logic, and also we know that while Metal was inexplicably forcing an old man to change clothes, Sonic was over here waking up in a random meadow, so basically Tails is full of crap. Meanwhile, Sarah and Robotnik are over here dressed up really nice for some reason. Once Metal has destroyed the land of the sky, we'll be the only ones left. Then we can get married. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. This is what the kids showed up for. All right, here we go. It's time for the big one. Knuckles' big explanation for what Metal Sonic's plans are. I actually didn't understand this as a kid. I only understood it after working on this video and doing some additional research, so here we go. The continents of the land of the sky are held up in the stratosphere and together by glaciers that go all the way down to the land of darkness. So the glaciers are acting like an anchor, which I don't think is ever actually shown on screen, which is part of the reason why I never understood it. In fact, I never even knew that the land of darkness was just the surface of the planet, because when Robonic first explains this, he refers to the two locations as dimensions. As you both well know, planet freedom is made up of two separate dimensions. The world, the one you live in, is known as the land of the sky. And the inner dimension is known as the land of darkness. Tell us something we don't know. Uh, shut up! So I thought they were on two completely different planes of existence, not part of the same planet. They even go through warp zones to travel to and away from the land of darkness, furthering that belief. Anyway, inside these structurally important glaciers are rivers of magma, which somehow don't melt the ice, but if the glacier is punctured, which Metal Sonic plans to do, the magma will rush to the surface and melt the ice. That will then detach the land of the sky from the rest of the planet, and the rotation of planet freedom will hurl the continents into space. At least, I think that's what's happening here. I'm trying my hardest, guys. Oh, 
This is impossible. So now everybody is headed to the North Pole. Metal, Robotnik and Sarah, Sonic, Knuckles and Tails. Whoa, hold up, hold the phone. Forget Sonic, this is the movie we needed right here. Knuckles and Tails in the tornado, flying over mountains and wearing cool hats. Unfortunately, it doesn't last very long. The remainder of the movie is this battle between Sonic and Metal. And you know what, I guess this scene does show the glaciers holding up the land of the sky, but they don't really look that tall to me. I think maybe I still just don't understand. The good news is that everyone gets their moment to shine in this last fight scene. Sonic gets a memorable line. You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? Yeah! Knuckles saves Sarah's life, which is... Uh, good, I guess. Gotcha! That was close! Hey, Knuckles! Tails shows that he actually does know how to fly, and he even gets to do a last-second eject from the tornado, which is rad. Ready? Ready? Careful! Fire! Uh -huh. ah! Yes! Oh yeah, and he also gets to touch a boo. There you are, Sarah! It's time for you to come with me now! Ah! Oh. Tails, get off! I'm so sorry. I never thought you'd stoop that low. You're probably thinking, hey, look at all that magma. Wasn't the whole point of this to not let all the magma out here? If that iceberg gets destroyed, then we're doomed! Well, hold on, Henry, because Knuckles is here to stop the magma by drilling into the ground and letting more magma out? I'm lost, I don't know. Yay, we stopped it! Good job! Huh? There's so much going on here. Sonic is getting destroyed. Tails is using his watch to reprogram Metal Sonic, which why didn't he do that earlier if that was an option? Get him now, Sonic! Right! Yeah. Sonic! Good work, Tails. You saved us. The president shows up and flies right into the glacier. Like, what the hell, dude? You're useless. If that ship explodes, then the planet is doomed. So Sonic blows up the ship and uh this is just getting harder and harder to explain as we go and i also just now realized i think i skipped over the part where metal looks up sarah's skirt and since their minds are linked sonic starts enjoying it wanted to make sure i pointed that one out I get it! You're synchronizing yourself with Metal! For no discernible reason, Metal saves President Idiot and Old Man Fucking Idiot, and apparently that one act of kindness is enough for Sonic to jump down into a lava pit to try and save him from robot death? Grab a hold of my hand! And here it comes, the climax of the movie. We finally get to hear the epic voice of Metal Sonic. There is only one Sonic. Sometimes when I make robot jokes, I go, beep boop, I am a robot, beep boop. Beep. And I think that's what they were going for here. I'm not really sure why, but it's like someone sat down and said, hey guys, what do robots sound like? Beep boop. Oh yeah, perfect. Let's robot. make them sound like that. Beep, it's going to be beep, epic. Beep. I am a robot. There is only one Sonic. Beep boop. So Metal dies, and we can clearly see that there has been some serious damage to that glacier. I guess this right here was the ever-important, we can't break this glacier, but the president clearly crashed a ship into that, which blew up, so... I don't know. Like, how did they stop the lava from going everywhere? How did the ice not melt? Maybe they were just so vague about explaining everything because they knew it didn't make any sense and that kids really wouldn't care. But the movie winds to a close, and nobody seems interested in maybe charging Robotnik with a crime or anything. Uh, they all just kind of live happily ever after, I guess. I'm getting out of here, Knuckles! Hey, wait a minute, Sonic! And that, my friends, was Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. Or was it? Yeah, it was, although it wasn't actually a movie. 
nowhere in the film is it ever referred to as a movie. In fact, even the VHS doesn't say that. The only place I think it's called a movie is right here on the box, and it's weirdly placed super far away from the title. What we actually just watched was a two-part OVA that was stitched together. The first episode is called Welcome to Eggman Land, and that ends when the trio approaches Robotropolis. The second episode, Sonic vs. Metal Sonic, begins after that. Revisiting this film, and yes, I'm still going to call it a movie because I grew up calling it a movie, was definitely interesting, especially now that I feel like I better understand the plot. It's, uh, it's not great. I think it was better when I didn't understand the plot, honestly, but I still really like it. I just can't help it. I do wish that it was better, though. I think there were a lot of things that just shouldn't have been included at all. Sarah especially should just shut up and leave. She's the clear worst part. I'd much rather have Amy around. Bonus points if she's hitting stuff with a hammer. But even though there are some obvious shortcomings, it does deliver some really satisfying scenes. I really like Sonic and Tails' house here. I wish we got to see a bit more of it because it's a really cool location. I also quite like the art style, aside from Sarah, who just looks like she was copied off the cover of a How to Draw manga book. Tails getting to fly around in the tornado, wearing a killer pilot's hat, and getting to tinker with gadgets was also super cool. I've always been a big Tails fan. Also, Knuckles is welding at one point. I love it. Give me a movie where it's just these three guys at home living on their cool floating island, piloting planes, wearing hats, and maybe Robotnik is there, but he isn't carrying around a screeching cat girl all over the place. You know what? Maybe you don't even need Robotnik. Just have these three guys go on a treasure hunting adventure with treasure hat Knuckles. I'm all over it. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this movie that so captivated me when I was a kid. And if you've only ever heard the infamous lines and the quotable clips, I hope this gave you a better understanding of what the movie was all about. As far as I know, it's no longer for sale on VHS or DVD, but it is out there if you look for it. And if some cheesy Sonic anime goodness sounds good to you, well, maybe track it down and give it a watch. And hey, do you like old games and my voice? Watch me play a variety of fun games over on my stream on my Twitch page. Or if you'd like to watch them on your own schedule, check out my stream archive over on my second channel. There's already hours and hours of content over there. It's usually a pretty chill time, and I hear that I make pretty great background noise, so give those links a look. And thanks so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it.